Hello and welcome to another episode of our show, Nile TV Live Newsroom. I'm Raham Morsi and I'll be presenting this show. First, let me reintroduce you to what the show is all about. The show is composed of a number of different news segments and we're going to have a look at the world of finance and what's trending in the world of sports. Not only that, but we'll also be looking at the latest tech news and highlight the most important art and cultural events. We're going to start off with some important political news and uh, some local news where President Abdel Fattah Sisi met on Tuesday with ministers taking part in the 24th Forum of the Gas Exporting Countries. President Sisi received the heads of the delegations in the new administrative capital in a meeting that was attended by the Minister of Petroleum, Tariq al during the meeting, the president asserted that the, uh, there is an important role for this forum to enhance international and regional energy cooperation. The president had urged all parties to exert all the effort needed in order to, uh, for, to build the energy field and reach a maximum usage for the natural gas resources. The head of state also said that these efforts will guarantee achieving a fair energy exchange and ensure that all countries benefit from their natural resources. President Sisi expressed hopes that all those attending will attend and take part in the Global Climate Conference COP27 that will be held in Sharm el-Sheikh next November. The upcoming conference will highlight the role of natural gas and ways of achieving a balance between development and preserving the environment. Welcome back and joining us over the phone to tell us more about the importance of these meetings and the COP27 is Dr. Adil Bashara, Sustainable Energy and Climate Change Consultant. Good evening to you, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, sir, can you tell us why is this meeting of the 11 member states important in shaping the production and export policy of the future? Uh, is it related to OPEC meetings as well? Of course, it is related to, to, to OPEC in a way or another, but uh, this is uh, another platform or another uh, forum mm -hmm. for the uh, only gas exporter uh, uh, countries. And in fact, the uh, gas has probably another, uh, I would say, track uh, uh, rather than the uh, uh, oil, uh, because gas is uh, very limited by the uh, infrastructure yes. that would help exporting the gas either through pipelines which is very limited and mm -hmm. well-known uh, uh, pipelines in, in, in the world where is it and also only the uh, liquefied gas where the uh, liquefaction platforms exist and that's why these countries are now trying to in fact explore how in this tran transition a difficult period for the world yes. to uh, satisfy the energy uh, demand all over the world and uh, uh, specifically in Europe now uh, yes. based on the crisis between Russia and Ukraine. So in fact it, it is highly important. This is one. The second that now uh, the importance also of uh, managing the different resources that could help in solving uh, mm -hmm. the problem. You knew that Europe now is yes, coming back. Yes, a significant energy to, problem, yes. Yes, uh, Europe now is coming back to uh, use the coal in its uh, uh, power generation plants, mm -hmm. which is really against uh, the climate change mm -hmm. uh, responsibility, but they are obliged to do so. And also, there is uh, a lot of effort to uh, help uh, yes. renewables in these countries and also in other regions to uh, uh, export to them electricity, which will take time. Yes. The, uh, the third point that it is coming just before COP27. Yes. And we know that the gas is the best uh, conventional fuel that could really help in the uh, climate change yes. uh, uh, mitigation if we can always switch to use uh, uh, the, the natural gas. 
Yes, uh, w which brings me, sir, to the next idea. Uh, is there significance in having these meetings right before COP27? Uh, are they somehow going to be related? Or will they be discussed in, in the COP as well? Uh, of course, this is one of the topics that uh, uh, is discussed because uh, uh, seeing now yes. the needs in the coming winter and also the danger or the risk of really having some people uh, without uh, energy uh, will impose itself on COP27 yes. because now we are trying to reduce uh, the uh, uh, greenhouse emissions mm -hmm. and based on this uh, uh, aggression or this uh, uh, problem in, in Europe between uh, Russia and Ukraine, mm -hmm. we are really working against this principle now. Yes. So this is this is a point that really will be discussed in COP27. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, what do you think uh, is the future for the oil and gas industry? Will it be something that's going to be phased out in the future for the environment? You see that the world now is working towards uh, what's so-called the uh, zero carbon scenario uh, on the horizon of 2050. And mm -hmm. when we say zero carbon, that it doesn't mean that all the conventional energy will be phased yes. out. But it does mean that if we have some conventional energy uh, uh, generation with yes. X uh, production or emission of CO2, we have to have a clean energy source yes. with minus X uh, uh, emission avoided. So we can say that X minus X plus, uh, uh, plus X is equal zero. And this is the concept of the zero carbon. Yes. It doesn't mean that all the conventional oil and gas will be, and, and coal will be phased out yes. by 2050 or in the near uh, future, in the coming uh, decades. But no, the, but the majority of the energy will be from clean and Sources, uh, uh, yes. clean energy. Okay, Dr. Adel Bashara, Sustainable Energy and Climate Change Consultant, thank you so much for highlighting the importance of these meetings. We're going to get a short break and then move on to the rest of the episode.